In the 6th century, a new type of barbarian had arrived at the borders of the Eastern Roman Empire. Either for their way of speech, their given names, their social status or something else, the literate Romans and Greeks named these nomads Slavs. Along with these Slavs came the Avars, steppe nomads who appear to have become leaders of a great portion of the Slavic tribes. Like so many before them, they pillaged and looted the shrinking territories of the former Great Roman Empire. Many of the Romans had, by that time, abandoned many cities and fled to the mountains or found refuge in coastal cities or on islands. With time, the Avars grew so powerful that in 626, along with their Slavic warriors, they attempted to sack the second capital of the Roman Empire, Constantinople. They failed and that failure was crushing. Avar power started to disappear and the Slavs grew restless. Portions of these Slavs, from the ranks of the warriors known as Kravati, started to lead some of the Slavic tribes to new lands. The leaders of these tribes are part of creation legends of several nations, but they all share the same root name. By legend, Kurbat led his tribesmen to their new home where they will become known as the Bulgarians while Krobathos and his six siblings led their tribes to the Adriatic coast, where they would become known as Croats. Some of these Kravati would go north or west, this distinct title appearing in documents all over Europe by the 10th and 11th centuries. Slavs that were by later retellings, led by the seven siblings, started settling the coastal area of the Roman province of Dalmatia, right around the time of the start of the Avar collapse. They began to coexist with Roman inhabitants who lived in the cities that probably they and the Avars had not long ago terrorized. Pope John IV, in 641, figuring that the situation in the area had calmed, sent a missionary by the name of Abbot Martin on a mission to retrieve saintly relics and rescue Christian captives from the Slavs. The resounding success of this mission is taken as proof of some form of amiable relations between Slav and Roman inhabitants. The Pope sent another priest, John of Ravenna, to re-establish the archbishopric of the city of Salona that had been abandoned, its inhabitants having fled to the nearby palace of Emperor Diocletian. After clearing Emperor Diocletian's mausoleum of Roman idols and the emperor's remains, John converted it into a cathedral dedicated to the ascension of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Today it is better known as the Church of St. Dominus. The settlement that will grow out of the palace with time became known as the city of Split. It appears that the region had indeed stabilized. Even some Slavs living around the Roman settlements had started to accept the Christian faith, in many cases combining it with their pagan customs. As acceptance and coexistence became the norm and the populace started to intermix, a certain divide still remained, differentiating between the old Roman patricians living in the cities and the newly arrived Slavs living outside of them. These Slavs, by all appearances, still had no political leadership, at least none that we know of. The best indication of this lack of leadership is also probably the lack of distinct naming convention. Most of these people will, for the next few hundred years, still be known, by the Greek and Latin-speaking world, simply as Slavs. This all changed with the rise of Charlemagne.